so there's good news and bad news to my presentation. The bad news is I'm starting now. I should be finished sometime around 8 or 9 o'clock this evening. So I hope you're ready to go. Um, again, thank you for the introduction. And I'd also like to thank Seagate for allowing me to come in and speak with you today. Um, the title of my presentation is something that is very, very important, very, very important for us, and I think very important for securing data environments in the world. Um, we at IBM have a very strong relationship with Seagate, and the relationship has lasted for many, many years. So we're in a situation where Seagate has excellent drive technology. Seagate has excellent debug and diagnostic technology for storage and storage data paths and things like that. They have, uh, actually they have lovely hardware also. And so the consideration is, is that IBM has worked very, very closely uh, with Seagate and as a result of that, we have been able to really work together to create optimization so that you're getting the best value out of your content. So if we, if we, if we look at the world, um, maybe I should stand over here. If we look at the world, um, we find out that there are, let's say, four different things that as a business person I really need to worry about. Um, I have to worry about the performance of my storage because the thing that's important to me is not really the storage. The thing that's important to me are the assets that I'm trying to use. Um, part of the thing that I need to worry about also is that we are in a world now where um, assets have different lifetimes, assets have different performance requirements, and they have uh, different use cases. And so the thing that's nice about what IBM and Seagate have done together in our partnership is over the years, we kind of cut our teeth on high performance computing. And so when you start talking about these gigantic grid environments where you know, hundreds and hundreds of CPUs are hammering on the same data or, or are creating metadata or creating data and moving it out, we're in a situation where IBM was really good at these technologies. We needed hardware infrastructure that could leverage the things that we have and we were also looking for a partner who could help us augment our solution to um, deliver more business value to our customers. So you look here and you say, what are the four things that we have to worry about? We have to worry about performance, we have to worry about the capacity, and when I speak of capacity, there is how much it costs and how much I need to store. We have to worry about how is that data being protected? How are those assets being protected? How can I assure that if I'm an architect or an engineer, that I'm in a situation where I can sleep well at night? My goal as an architect for IBM is I want to ensure that all of the folks who are controlling this world, A, are worrying about their business issues, and are B, in a position where they get to sleep at night. Because what happens when, when things go bad, you guys are going to get a call, and when things get bad, I'm going to get a call. I don't want a call. So the consideration is um, me as, as an architect for IBM, I said, hey, I want the best in class pieces, and I want to make sure that I'm getting the best business value. So again, you look at the puzzle here, and we're managing storage, you know, one of the big reasons why we're here, but we're also managing compute because what happens is you know, the area now is getting kind of fuzzy between what's storage, what's compute, where am I putting all these assets, where are the assets being used. You know, again, when we talk to support, I want to put in the solution, I want this solution to be painless, seamless, works all day, every day, allowing me to sleep. Uh, and, and oh, by the way, you know, there are times that objects fail, a drive fails or something like that. I want to be in a situation where I have reliability, good value, and I can get the rebuild times that I need, meet the TCO, you know, value and uptime requirements. And then the other piece of this that we're seeing a lot now is we also have to manage the network. And, and the thing that's important for you to realize is that when we are in this world, it is very easy if you are not thinking well about it, you're, you're really in a position where a system can become unbalanced. And when the system becomes unbalanced, um, 
your costs are going to go up, your performance is going to go down, people are going to be woken up in the middle of the night saying, hey, I need to have this job done, I need this asset. We, we, we talk about media and entertainment. Uh, I'm in a situation where I am architecting solutions on a daily basis for m and &E. I need to know whether, am, am I storing content for 8K? Do I need the performance tier for 8K? Do I have the performance necessary for 4K? Do I have the performance necessary to have multiple editors, you know, acting on that content at the same time? And so what happens when we have a partnership, and, and, and again, the things that I do for a living is my team, and I have Sanjay here from my team with me today, we put together reference architectures, we test it, we validate it, oftentimes with the vendors that are involved for some of the software, we certify these solutions. But the critical piece here is that what we try to do is, again, figure out how to find the best balance, understand the difference between these two components, and then allow the partner, the end user customer, to ultimately decide how to best balance the solution for the workload that they have today and or for the workload that they're expecting to see in the next 12 months, 14 months, you know, the lifetime of, of this solution. So, you know, I'm going to talk quickly about the Seagate hardware. I mean, a lot of this integrates some of the components that IBM has, but I'm just going to talk quickly that, you know, the nice thing about Seagate as a vendor for these solutions is they have tools and or solutions that fit many different use case environments. And so what happens is the first thing is I have a palette of colors that I can choose to when I'm painting that, that masterpiece. I mean, the, the, the critical piece as a M&E expert is um, I have colors on my palette and I am trying to create a masterpiece. Now, if you work with some vendors, you'll be in a situation where they say, well, you know, the color that I have is black. The color that I have is flash. The color that I have is whatever. And you can sit there and say, okay, could Picasso create a masterpiece with only a white canvas and with black paint? Absolutely he could. But do you give up some of the richness that if I had a portfolio of colors to work with, to choose, to allow me to be in a position where I say, I want to put the right asset in the right place at the right time. And what we're seeing today is it's more than just saying, I've got a flash tier, I've got a spinning tier, I've got an SSD tier or, or a tape tier. It's now saying, I'm in a situation where I have this asset and I have contract people working in this city. I have producers who are in this city. I have the field uh, where I'm doing the ingest in this city. Can we do geo-replication? Can we do data movement again? So the customer, the end user customer is worrying about their business and not worrying about IT, not worrying about IT infrastructure. And so the critical piece is, when you look at these hardware components that Seagate has, I have components that are optimized for sequential. I have components that are optimized for capacity. I have components that, well, anywhere, anytime, you know, we're seeing a lot more of that. And I have, you know, this is, this is the big world. I may not know what my asset structure is and where I'm going to be needing that content. I need a solution that can provide that. And that includes a hardware component. That also includes a software component. And that's one of the places where IBM and Seagate have really married our solution together to create that single world where you're not worrying about buying things from five different vendors, things aren't working perfectly and the vendors are fighting with each other. We're in a situation where we're saying, hey, I have a tested solution, I have tested hardware, I have a tested environment that I know is going to behave as it is supposed to. Because we've productized, we've created a solution for that content, we're now in a situation. And you sit there and say, well, hey, I also want to be in an environment where I need some of this and I need some of this and I need some of that. Or the thing that I see a lot of in the marketplace today is I'm working on a movie today, you know, and I'll just use an example that is not my example, but I'll say, I'm working on Spider-Man 15. 
there are assets that I need to work. There's clips that I need from the older Spider-Man, you know, one through 14 that I need to be aware of. Oh, by the way, you know, are, are my editors or colorists going to be working on that content from Spider-Man 1 or Spider-Man 7? Probably not. So can I keep that content on a capacity tier until, you know, the day before the editor is going to be start working on it? I mean, the producer is going to say, I want this, this, this. I want these chunks. Bring them up so they're ready for tomorrow. You know? And so again, that's that mixed I.O. environment. That's that multi-protocol environment. And understanding, again, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep stressing this, it's I want to ensure that I am putting the right asset in the right place at the right time. And I wanna have a tool so I'm worried about using my asset, not placing my asset. And so, so these are the critical pieces. And so the other thing that I'd like to, you know, and, and this is kind of like an eye chart, for, for the architecture that Seagate and their cluster store product uses. But there is one piece of this chart that I'm only bringing this up to talk about one thing. And as I said earlier, one of the reasons that IBM has partnered so tightly with Seagate is because it's, it's more than we make really good drives. The, the, the situation is, is that within the heritage of Seagate and the heritage that I worked with with Seagate in the past was we have the test equipment to optimize the SATH data paths, the fiber channel data paths, the InfiniBand data paths. We have the technology to do that. And so what's happened is Seagate is so good at this that they have really characterized the flow of content from the spindle to where it's going to be used. And so when, when I just looked at I brought this strictly for this one portion of the slide, and that is that Seagate is really smart on getting the right stuff, getting the right bandwidth, getting the right performance out of my aggregate of all of my spindles. They call it the Nitro Intelligent I.O. Manager. But the critical piece of this and why it is so cool is that these guys know so much about the technology down at the bottom that they know best how to get those things to get the best value out of these data paths. You know, so we got just dotted lines here for the data paths. But the thing is, is that with the intelligence and the, the things that they've learned over time, we're in a situation where, again, we're protecting the data, we're moving it to where it needs to be used to get the best value out of it. And again, why do we choose Seagate? Because these guys know the best about this kind of technology. So I just, I just wanted to bring that slide up just for that. Now we're kind of get back to that higher level of the architecture. So what happens, you know, one, one of the areas that, that we've seen, and this is really an environment where IBM really gets engaged, is we're now in a world where we need to do global collaboration. You know, I'm using contract edit, I'm, I have my field team who is in an environment, and, and I'll talk about some of the things that we're doing over at IBM that we're showing is, we're in an environment now where I am recording all my raw content in 4K, but I'm using a proxy to send a proxy up to the producer so, the, so that the producer can see those dailies right away. You know, I'm now pulled a lag out. In, 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 in the past, I would record all day, the on-site director, second you know, director, or associate director would be doing all the work, send it back to the producer, have a look at this, see if it looks good. Um, we're now in a situation where I can now send those proxies up and say, hey, I don't like the look of this, I don't like the feel of this, take another shot, do it again. I've shortened the time to value for these video assets that we're creating. Now, so I'm in an environment now where I have producers here, I have editors here, I have the home office here, I may have the home office in multiple places. I mean, you talk about the big houses. The big houses have editors working everywhere. I mean, when, 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 I'm, when I'm dealing with large 4K assets that I'm dealing with, I have a global team working on all this. You know, who's doing effects? Who's doing, you know, the audio components? Who are doing all these different pieces? They are way all over the place. And so what happens is with the partnership of IBM, we have a product which is a single file system, single namespace, geo-replicated, geo-separated environment. It's called Spectrum Scale. And what happens is it allows us to have 
first a lock manager, which means that multiple people can work on the same asset. And if I have a two hour asset, I can have multiple people working on different chunks of those assets. And so again, I have the flexibility because of the software tools that we learned to deal with when we were in the environment of high performance computing where I had you know, many, many computers simultaneously acting on a data piece, we're now in that same position from an editing perspective because all of these assets that we're seeing in media and entertainment are exactly the same. I have multiple people touching and acting on those assets, editors, colorists, producers, uh, you know, if I'm gonna do play to air, if it's broadcast rather than film, I have all those pieces. And oh, by the way, I'm in a situation, because of the large format storage that I have at my fingertips, I have all of these assets available for whoever needs those assets and the time. And so what happens is I can have multiple people working on the same content, I can have it so I have consistent metadata between multiple sites which gives me protection and also the IBM component of Spectrum Scale that we've partnered with Seagate gives us that capability that well uh, I can get to this asset faster than I can get to that asset so we'll use this asset for um, the work that I'm doing now and oh by the way when I'm done working with that I'm going to geo replicate that so everyone has the current component and the thing is again the critical piece here is when I get into this automatic advanced file management routing environment, I've provided extra protection for my content, I've provided extra performance for my content, and when I have this software married specifically to a strong hardware platform that has been optimized for media and entertainment, it puts us in a very, very strong place. And again, these are the reasons why you come here and you say, how do I pick the best partnerships? I can pick four or five vendors where I like and I can knit the solution together myself and have the support issues of knitting that solution together myself where you can say, hey, who has got a solution that will give me that soup to nuts value that I need? So again, so again, and I'm reinforcing, so I'm worrying about my business and not worrying about IT. We don't want to be in an environment where we have to have, you know, 100 grad students keeping this stuff running. No, we have good, easy user interface, good, strong protection. The data is there. The data has integrity. The data has geo integrity. It's a very strong play. And so the consideration here, again, working with the collaboration options that, that Seagate has, you know, we can remote mount content, we can have caching to, again, as I said before, provide that performance. You know, the things that also are important, we can provide both either synchronous replication of that content or asynchronous replication. And, and, and just to clarify the difference between the two, if I'm doing synchronous replication, I may have two, two people specifically two people specifically acting on that same content. So I want to have synchronous replication to make sure that everything is lockstep. But if I have someone working on the content at site A and the producer is going to look at it later tonight, I can use the asynchronous replication, which is certainly more affordable. So the consideration is, is again, we have a single global namespace. All the files are visible to everyone, but I'm in an environment that depending on what I need to do to get the right data to the right place, to the right tier at the right time, I have all that flexibility that allows me to, again, make an affordable solution, possibly have lesser networking costs between my sites, things like that. Again, the goal we have here is robust, strong, flexible, and an affordable solution. So it's really great. So the consideration here is, again, you know, this isn't just campus-wide replication of the data. We're in an environment where we understand that we are now global and with us being a global place, um, you know, I want to be able to have those um, assets available. And again, the critical piece also is, you know, I can, I can do migration, I can be in an environment where I have legacy content, legacy storage, and I can say, can I get the best value out of the assets that I've already invested and possibly use the new assets for the higher performing or highest performing tiers or, or just for the densest tiers for the large, very large assets. We have the flexibility within this product, within the G-Series 
of, of Seagate to provide that connectivity so that I can get the best value of the assets and, and not have to forklift. I mean, so many of the vendors here say, I would like to give you my new technology, and with my new technology, all you have to do is bring a forklift truck, we'll forklift out all the old stuff, and we'll put in all the new stuff. And we're saying, you know, let's be smarter than that. How can I get the best value of what I have? How can I migrate on my schedule rather than, you know, just, hey, pull it out and leave? You know, and sometimes there's a lease issue and we've got to forklift stuff out and that's okay. But the critical piece here is, again, create a flexible, easy to use, easy to maintain solution that allows me to get the right data. And if some of that right data is on older technology, get it to the right technology or possibly leave it at the older technology. I'll give you an example. I was talking with a customer earlier today and the customer has some legacy um, assets that are still on CXFS SGI file systems and that's way off. And, and I went to him and I said, well, let me help you migrate. He said, no, I don't want to migrate it. I just want to be able to access those assets. So, you know, can I, can I have a, a connection piece to allow me to connect to those assets? Because really, I'm not going to use them a lot, but, you know, I don't want to have the expense of and or bandwidth to, to move them. But, and the thing is, we have, we have the ability to help with that spectrum scale marriage with, with the G Store tool to be able to manage that legacy environment and protect it and hopefully get the people where they're safe and get the people where those assets can be you know, rightly used. And again, you know, the goal that I have, the goal that we have is, you know, these tools are great. Let's, let's put the affordability model in, move the assets that we're going to be working with all the time on the new technology. Let's protect those other assets. So the consideration here, you know, the, the world that we have created here is, is really... Um, I'm dealing with Windows, I'm dealing with Mac, I'm dealing with Linux. Um, I don't want to have separate file systems. I want to have a single namespace so that anybody operating with any of these operating systems can access all of the assets that they need. Oh, by the way, I'm now in a situation also where um, I want to have some of this block content uh, stored in the cloud. And so I have both the capability of Cinder if I want to store block content in the cloud, or Swift if I want to just use it as a connector uh, to the cloud. And again, the world is changing. You know, people are talking about cloud storage, people are talking about object storage. It is very, very popular. The key thing, the key message that we're trying to deliver here is we want to provide for you a flexible solution that allows you to put the right asset in the right format at the right place um, and, and the use cases, um, you know, it's, it's, it's now more than just storing the film, storing that film asset. I need the metadata. I need to do uh, speech to text. I need to analyze whether the quality of the content is high so that a producer doesn't waste their time looking at all that B-roll to find out, well, I've got bad audio or I've got bad video. Just skip over it. Again, the, the, the tools that we have with the solution is it allows us to do analytics, it allows us to do tagging of metadata, tagging of, of that B-roll. So again, again, if, if you listen to my presentation, you know, here or over at the IBM booth, the goal of what we are trying to achieve is allow you to get the best value of every user of this content to do their best business value to those solutions, to that content. And, and if I can automate or use analytics to lighten the load of those people, that helps. If I can uh, use some of my analytics to say these assets haven't been used in a long time, so I'm going to do policy tiering or, or policy, hey, this editor likes using this piece of clip or something like that. Let's keep that hot all the time. Again, the, the tools that we have with the collaboration between Seagate and IBM is that we can help you with all of these components to make your job easier. I mean, that's, you know, you sleep at night, I sleep at night, everybody's a winner. So I, again, this is just a quick eye chart. Um, you know, we have flexible data, as, um, data access. You know, we have the ability to do NFS, we have the ability to do Swift, we have the ability to do Cinder. 
you know, so we have the ability to essentially connect whatever hardware you have to the storage infrastructure that you would have from us and you know that you can sleep at night because you're not going to have driver issues or file issues or connection issues and he's running a Mac and he's running Linux. How can we, how can we both collaborate on the tool? We've done all of that. And again, the other piece of this is that we have created this solution so that it is all tied to open standards. So you're not, you're not stuck in a proprietary world where three years from now or five years from now, you're mad because you can't get out from under it. And so the consideration of, of, of why we consider our value to be so strong is because we are putting everything into standard API support, all of the connectivity, all the storage, all the data movement, those things, so that if you choose to uh, add someone else's storage, God forbid, or if you choose to add someone else's metadata tools or analytics tools, it's all to standard. So again, you're not doing heavy lifting. You're, you're, you're again, sleeping at night. So we've got, we've got both Swift and Cinder, depending on whether you're going to the cloud or coming from the cloud, we have both of those pieces. But you know, the critical thing, again, and, 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 and why you want to partner with both Seagate and IBM is we have been in this business for a long time. M&E may ha only be in the file business for a short number of years. We have been storing critical assets forever in partnership with Seagate with their hardware, with Seagate with their engineering technology and tools that they have to help optimize the world. So you get a solution that is vetted, tested, allows you to sleep at night, and it's, it's something that allows you to grow. You know, I've been to many NABs. You know, three years ago, only NHK over in the No Earth Hall showed anything that said 8K. One or two people showed 4K. A lot of people showed 2K. What are we seeing today? The world is changing. The frame rate is changing. People are doing 3D. 3D, 60 frames per second. You know, and we have value by, by being able to do H.264, H.265, that helps a little. We have an environment that can provide parallel scaling of performance and capability. So again, the, the important piece of our model is, I don't want to throw out assets that you have. I want to continue to put the right piece as, at the right asset, at the right tier, and I want to be able to protect my legacy to get the best value out of the investments that I've made. And so just to get you guys back so you can start having drinks, the consideration, the, the, the few things that we're trying to say today is that by picking the right partner, you can sleep at night, get the best value for your money and the best value for your business. And so uh, I, I hope that you take time considering going through looking at the platforms that they have, possibly come over to our booth, look at some of the tools and pieces that we have also. But I would like to thank you so much today for the time you let me have.